Um, the tightening in the capital markets will continue to drive a trend of borrowers returning to lending institutions that operate from their balance sheet and are able to close loans based on the terms issued at commitment. So this will allow banks, insurance companies, and even agency lenders like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to dominate the market for multifamily and commercial real estate loans in 2008. We do feel like cap rates on all property types across all asset classes will rise as a, as, as a result of the change in the capital markets. So basically we had cap rates that had got down to record low levels, but that was being fueled by all the cheap debt that you could get access to in the permanent market. So sure, you could buy a property at a six cap when you were able to get a loan at 5%. Mm -hmm. Well now you can't get a loan at 5%, you've got to get a loan maybe at 6%, or maybe a little higher depending on who you're talking to, because most of your conduits are pricing loans at 300 over treasuries, so they're in the mid sixes. So now you can't buy property at a six cap any longer. You gotta, so you're going to start to see those cap rates have to rise in order to adjust to where the market is right now. More specifically, we estimate cap rates on Class A properties to widen 25 to 50 basis points. Um, Class B and C properties will see cap rates widen out as much as 100 basis points. Tighter underwriting will result in less loan proceeds as lenders look for the current cash flow of the property to support the debt service instead of taking asset appreciation and rent growth into consideration. So if the property doesn't cash flow basically now, you're going to have a tough time getting a loan. And what was happening in the past is people would say, okay, well, we're going to get asset appreciation, so in the next few years the property is going to be valued at this number. We're also going to bring in new tenants, so we're going to have more income. So we were all betting on all this future income. Well, all of that's gone now, and it's basically whatever your property is generating in current cash flow is what's going to determine your loan amount. And what we're seeing across the market is a lot of sellers, as well as buyers, are having to adjust to these changes. And, I mean, it's causing some deals not to work out because sellers have an expectation of what they think they should get from their property based off what they've seen in the market. Buyers are trying to figure out, okay, I want to buy your property, but I've got to buy it based on the amount of money Evans is willing to give me. So there's sort of, a, there's sort of an adjusting having to go on right now where sellers are having to adjust a little bit and realize, hey, the same market that we were in a year ago doesn't exist any longer. And one of the greatest changes that we've seen in the market is I used to write loans and I would give people 10 years interest only. 10 years interest only. And then they would have a balloon payment due at the end of the 10 years. So you have to keep in mind, over that 10 years, they were not amortizing the loan at all. They were just paying interest only payments. And then that balloon payment was due at the end of the 10 years. All of that's gone now. I mean, you would, you would be fortunate if you would get interest only for two or three years on a loan. Um, and if you did get interest only on a loan, it would definitely be an apartment building. We, I mean, we were doing 10 years interest only on shopping centers, office buildings, whatever, whatever it was. So, so the market, in other words, I like to use this analogy. We were definitely drunk with credit. We were literally drunk with credit, and no one had pulled the punch bowl away. Um, but in, last summer, somebody came and, and, and took the punch bowl away. But I will say this, the Fed, they gave us another drink in January when they <laughs> cut rates. So. Um, Multifamily assets, which we were talking about at our table prior to the, prior to the beginning of the, the talk here, are gaining popularity as results of cracks in the for sale housing market. We estimate rent growth will remain stable at around three to four percent, with vacancies continuing to decline nationally. Praise God. <laughs> That's our apartment association <laughs> executive director. Um, new construction in the apartment market has remained contained, and we expect this to continue as a result of high construction costs and tighter lending standards. So yeah. right now one of the greatest fears is that the apartment market could get overbuilt because everybody knows that multifamily is now the hot property type. Well, everybody will want to run out here and start building apartment buildings. But we believe that's going to be contained because of the, tight, the tighter lending standards and then also just construction costs are just out of this world right now. Um, we are seeing, and we were having this discussion at our table, we are seeing more home builders start to build apartments. You know, I'm looking at opportunities for home builders in Greensboro right now where they're saying, hey, we can't build houses any longer, we'll just start building apartments. Um, so that is, we are seeing that trend occur as well. Um, growth in the retail property market may experience a slowdown 
as a large number of square feet were delivered over the last few years during the housing boom. Um, in addition, retailers are pulling back from opening new stores as a result of less demand from consumers that were one time flushed with cash from equity in their homes as a result of ever rising house, home, home values. And we also have seen a, a pullback in spending on major ticket items such as automobiles, appliances, and any home improvements. Um, despite the conventional wisdom that retail sales will plummet as a result of a drop in home equity is overblown. Because as I mentioned before, consumer spending traditionally has moved in line with disposable income and not movements in asset prices. Wage and salary growth have remained stable and even posted an increase of 5.9% over last year. Keep in mind the declines being reported in national price indices reflect substantial drops in home prices in small select number of markets and modest gains in most other markets. So when you break down these national numbers, the data shows that house prices are still rising in markets where 65% of the United States population lives. See that, that, and they don't mention that in the media. So let's say that again. Mm. When you break down these national numbers, the data shows that home prices are still rising in markets where 65% of the United States population lives. Shopping center developers will benefit from working with grocery store tenants because they are extremely recession proof. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mixed use will continue to, be, continue to be the development of choice as a demand for urban redevelopment remains strong amongst young professionals and others concerned about rising energy costs. Large numbers of municipalities have become attracted to the tax revenue of, of a vibrant central business district. So the incentive to develop in the urban core will sustain over the next several years. Um, developers benefit from a diversity in rental income stream when they include multiple uses in a property. So they're not only getting an income stream from apartments, but they're also getting an income stream from a retail piece or maybe even from an office piece. I know one of the opportunities that we're looking at right now in downtown Winston-Salem, they're actually going to have three uses in the property. It'll be residential at top, it'll be office in the middle, and they're going to have retail on the bottom. So it's really diversified, and, and it really sort of insulates the asset a little bit from cyclical movements in the market. Um, we, do see, we do see many indicators that are pointing to a slowing in the office market. Um, after 16 quarterly, quarterly declines in national vacancies, we have seen a rise in office vacancies during the fourth quarter of 2007. This may be caused by a number of factors such as the recent slowing in corporate profits, financial troubles amongst a number of financial companies, and the developing trend of more corporations allowing employees to work from home. Mm -hmm. And that is a big trend if you're not keeping your eye on that. Mm -hmm. A lot of corporations are starting to let their individuals work from home. I know for a fact SunTrust has a number of bankers that they now let work from home. RBC Centura is doing the same thing. JetBlue has their whole reservation system. Their whole reservation system, those guys work from home. I know Southwest Airlines does a lot of the same things. So that is a growing trend. Um, lack of construction in the office market allowed vacancies to drop and rents to grow. But we see a substantial amount of office product coming online in 2008. In 2007, there were 53 million square feet of office delivered. But there is an estimated 75 million square feet scheduled for delivery in 2008. With the slowing of the economy almost certain, we estimate the large delivery office product in 2008 will slow rent growth and drive up vacancies in select markets. Medical office continues to be immune to any slowdown as the number of baby boomers requiring health care services continues to mushroom and the demand for space strengthens. Growth in the industrial property market will moderate as export growth will help to offset any loss that we're getting in import growth as a result of slowing retail sales and less consumer demand. Technology and pharmaceutical companies continue to demand flex space and property for research and development. Growth in the hospitality sector will slow as well as a result of less demand from travel amongst consumers and business travelers. This may be offset in major metropolitan markets and destination locations as a result of our weak currency and the demand for foreign travelers. So markets like Atlanta, 
Orlando, even markets out in California where they're very attractive to foreign travelers, those markets and their hospitality market may be a little bit immune to any further slowing.